I'm Perry. This is in plain sight. To my right, sir, of all things Blaze TV, the one and only Mr. Brandon Steele. This is a special day. We made it. And, yeah. Well, first, I'm retarded. I spent all of the live stream yesterday saying, David, we'll be going live today. And then when I went to go double check, I realized March 2nd was, it was <laughs> kind oh, of a sadder oops. day. Well, uh, to weasel out of it, I will say the, the leap year kind of fucked me up. I yeah. added I added an extra day, but I did it after the day had yeah. already been added. In a normal year, you would have been right. No, I would have been double oh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I added, I added two days to the, uh, the holiday. But I don't know anything about this i did see in the twitter mention someone said uh the comedy he was doing was off-putting hell yeah and that's my favorite type yeah and we'll we'll see how he uh starts this i i heard the first few seconds but we'll do what we've been doing this is fucking two and a half hours so we're gonna watch uh oh boy half for today and half for friday with that in mind he's back with a vengeance after this is the uh, the promised December 10th yeah. live stream. A short 13 weeks later. This is uh, David Wilcock Live. Dot connecting. Global Peace Meditation. That's, that's David laughing. Oh. What a way to start. Right <laughs> off top. He laughs like a squeaky wheel. His, it sounds like he's trying to cover it with his mouth, too. This is a good sign because the last time he started this way was when he was doing his cigarette bit. Yeah. Oh, if he comes out laughing, this is about to be fire. Well, he's cracking himself up. <laughs> yeah, this is about to be 10 out of 10. He's wearing a mask or something. <laughs> listen to it. Yeah, listen to the voice. It's like... It's just him with one of those plastic bags over his head. <laughs> hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sick. Uh, we did predict this based on the video we watched yesterday where he was... Anytime Uncle Colin is making an appearance, David's in a good mind state. That is... Uh, if we Uncle want... Colin really is his like perfect alter ego. It really... It's the dissociative identity disorder yeah. thing, that, except he is like literally manifesting it. Where in the 90s, you know, people would claim to have all these identities and one of them would be the bad one. Yeah, I genuinely believe he probably goes into like fugue states and comes out with like weird bits written in his odd Australian. Yeah, Scotting Coxtrailian, yeah. I believe is what he calls it. But yes, I think that the appearance of Uncle Colin indicates we're going to get a loopy David. Oh, it's, boy. It's Groundhog's Day, except for David losing his mind. When Uncle yeah. Colin sees his shadow, David goes nuts for a month and a half. But fun nuts. The most yeah, fun. It's... Hell yeah. <laughs> Sick. Uh, nice. They What's all have their way say? with me. Uh, Banana sandwich. Make Earth cosmic again. Wow. All right. I, I do want to point out. He still has the cigarette. <laughs> the cigarette. Oh, of course. <laughs> the cigarette. I think every character he comes up with smokes. What a bizarre constant to include in all your characters. Well, David knows that you look cool smoking. That's true. Because it's not it's smoking a cigarette isn't necessarily like a funny thing. No, but you look cool doing it. Yeah. I like the uh, the addition of the American flag in the background, too. That's a nice touch. Nice. Me, dude. I, uh, you know, I wore a little different outfit than I might usually do. Is because, his Australian uh, from New or is his alien from New York? Uh you know, you guys made me put this hat on. I wasn't really too happy about that. I I is I that can't supposed to be he, a Jewish voice? Yeah, I can't tell if he's doing an accent what or what. <laughs> We're here to steal well, your yeah, gold. Yeah, I'm, you know. Trying it out for size. I you know, feel a little nervous. Oh he got look, he got new shit. This is a wow. good. He's so poor, he had to buy crystal lamps. Well, that's how you know when he's he's when he's manic maxing is he starts buying things, <laughs> it, even though he has yeah. no money. It is manic he can't max. afford any of this, but he's buying it. Oh, what am I talking about? Uh, Spooky informed us on Twitter today. Friday is David's birthday, so maybe he's buying this wow. shit for his birthday. For his birthday, he got himself lamps. Yes, yeah, so happy birthday, David. Like this, and just you know, sharing myself with the group. I mean. Uh, you know, this is sort of a confession, so I have a lot of what? things to say that are on my mind, you know. I... Do you think he's going to do this the whole time? This bit <laughs> took 16 weeks. If he, <laughs> <laughs> he just he, he kept rewriting it and writing it to make it perfect. He's been he's been crafting this bit for months. I'm going to hope he takes it off at a certain point. I know you point. guys have been questioning me about things like my eating habits and, you know, what am I <laughs> actually doing here on Earth? And I just want you to try to relax a what? little bit. He's doing like the I Dream of Genie dance. I don't really dance. think it's fair I to can't identify the accent he's trying to do. I 
I guess that's just the generic, like, Marvin the Martian type voice. I guess. Me about my lifestyle choices or oh, the things boy. that I, you know, may or may not want to do with my life. So, uh-huh. why don't you guys just back off and leave me some space, okay? I don't really want to wear this hat me? anyway. I think I look better like this. I mean, it's kind of a, a little more masculine. He's, he's gone cuckoo again. <laughs> I like that uh, the cuckoo now involves props, though. He's not crazy. He's crazy with a, a, a fake cigarette and a I, mask. I'm telling you, this is Uncle Colin's doing. I, Uncle I, Colin bought these props. I think so. I think there's a different force within him who is driving this mania. You know, I'm trying my hardest to just be good here for you guys and give you some, some warmth Savior and some sharing and some this, love. This is bizarre. <laughs> but... <laughs> This is exactly what I want from this him. Is, this is perfect. This is awesome. <laughs> from the interdimensional planes, you know, we're not trying to hurt anybody. <laughs> the cigarette keeps falling. All right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> there, Woo! there was absolutely no punchline to that. He just kind of stopped. He, for, for 90 seconds, he did nothing, and then he finishes with his, uh, Woo! like, that's his, I just crushed that sound. Yeah, he thought he did so good he could end the bit. It's your dear, dear uncle. It's Colin. Oh, no. no, it is Uncle Colin. Oh, no. <laughs> uncle Colin has taken over. He's now the main personality. Oh, I feel like a therapist. Like, can we, can I speak to David? <laughs> I want, can you bring David Wilcock to the front? <laughs> Colin McGeezer, you got to go through this too, mate. Who molested me? <laughs> I said before, I want. That's where he's going to be living when this doesn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> He's practicing his homeless sign-making skills. That's what this is. <laughs> change. I've been working on me penmanship. We'll, sa- we'll, we'll save like the world for change. <laughs> now I've got it, mate. It says no. You can't guess what's inside. It does say fragile, which is probably appropriate for his yeah. uh, psychological state at the moment. By shaking me, mate. <laughs> That's not going to work out. Why? Because did I'm, he put uh, that on the box, or does Amazon put that on the box now? I, I did he see that and just was like, "This is the funniest thing I've ever seen." You can, you won't be able to tell what's in here if you shake the box. That's a good one. I, th- I think, I think he's gone crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, but there. there's also the box is like folded up. There's there couldn't be anything in it. It's, well, yeah, it's no, he's clearly collapsed. He's clearly opened it. Is it here? Uh, so he just kept tick? the box. Ah, yes. I'm made with less material. <laughs> you see that, mate? <laughs> oh, God bless you, David. He's just riffing on the box. <laughs> it's just the world's worst improv comic. He's like, what do, what do we got here? A trophy? Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> then, yeah, it just, he doesn't. There's no, there's no, there's no joke. There's just, he just, he's just reading the box. My less material. <laughs> oh, I, it came from Amazon. They Woo! all have their way with me. It's subtext. It's innuendo. There's, there's other conditions that are at work. I think he's saying he has a small penis. Is that it's made with less material? Unless he's talking about his uh, brain matter at the moment. In terms of uh, the message of made with less material, you see, our companies are not doing what we like them to be doing right now. So we're a little bit on the are... shy side. That's why if you ask us who it's to, you know, we might say it's fragile. David, don't dox your address, dude. Oh, what, what are you a doing? Mistake. No one zoom in and clear up that picture so you all have his address. Uh, no one do that. What are you actually doing, didn't have him, mate. You're not supposed to see that. Yes. That's <laughs> <an address later. laughs> He dropped character. It's Whoops. like Bobo doing the fugitive. <laughs> well, yeah, he, again, he realized he just doxed himself, you yeah. dumb dumb. Right. Well, Uncle Colin Anyways, doxed him. Colin here. <laughs> Uncle Colin got... <laughs> Uncle Colin doxed his ass. <laughs> Come on, mate. We got to do something to make it a little bit more interesting. We want your beautiful face. Well, I got to wear these glasses at times, mate. It's not always easy being me. I like that he's got glasses, yeah, but... but they're all the way down his nose, and he's only looking over them. Well, not... they are they are prop glasses. <laughs> we got to see what you guys have got to say. Everybody seems to be laughing. Yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. Laughter is the best medicine, mate. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're sick. Yeah. Yeah. And then medicine is the best medicine. Yeah, don't tell that to the dying. Yeah. <laughs> mate, and I'm happy to be bringing that to you today. But first, I wanted to talk about my cake box. What? Uh, Colin McGeezer and his cake box. Did he mate. go nuttier than we thought? I mean, look, 
Again, isolation will start to fracture the mind. Because this is this is very strange to disappear for for three months and be like, I'm just furiously working on all my things, and then you come back and you're just playing different characters. Well, this is what he was working on. I hope that's not the case. I hope <laughs> this is not three months worth of effort. This is. <laughs> Oh. Are you listening oh. yet? <laughs> Melanie Martinez presents all the Trilogy time, Tour, yeah. featuring songs from all three... Now, I gotta tell you something, I'm gonna be talking out of school a little bit here, mate, because, you know, we had this Australian Secret Service, or ASS, uh, and we found ass. out... the ass. Nice. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah. I told, <laughs> tell you, he took, he took 16 weeks to write this bit. Uh, he definitely wrote that. Hit, uh, do, do us a favor. Hey! <laughs> we got another name for that. We call it the bum or something like that. Oh, we the bum, yes. Strain for the ASS. I'll be thinking about doing the bum for a while. <laughs> Retain, you know, no Little bussy on the mind. Fine. And I get paid. <laughs> you know, I get paid for laying some ease into the world, for causing rest. And so yeah. I get paid in the form of a cake box, mate. I'm not even joking with you. Uh, do you... I'm not even joking. They pay me in cake. What is a cake box? Is uh, that a thing, or is is that a what, box that contains cake? That's what they call the asshole of a twink. <laughs> they paid the me cake in box. cake boxes, <laughs> and the cake boxes they was getting were full paid of in Australian <laughs> hundred dollar bills. I felt so much pussy, I might switch the bussy. I did a few jobs. I had a few cake boxes. I kept them around the house. No big deal. This Sheila is a very care. intricate story, and I'm curious as whether that there's going to actually be a punchline at the end, or if it's just going to end. I think we're I think we're watching the punchline. I think this whole thing is the punchline. Because David be. clearly had literally, I'm telling you, took 13 weeks to write this story. It, it takes a long time to come up with a joke as good as ASS. Yeah. <laughs> My son's he's down here, but after a while, mate. It's like, oh, now he's got kids? <laughs> Let's say uh, Paul oh. Fitchin to oh, Colin McGeezer has a family. He's not alone. Yeah, I was going to say, allow me to over-psychoanalyze this. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think David may have uh, started feeling a bit lonely, but but Uncle Colin. Uncle, Uncle Colin. Colin's got a very happy family. Yeah, his with kids have left children. the nest. They're doing yeah. good. That's what I was doing. The cake they don't hate him. His hovercar company's winning. Fire yeah, <laughs> he's not in so debt. Many cake boxes in the closet, in the attic, in the well, garage. The cake boxes aren't the only thing in the closet. The yeah. basement. And me wife, she goes, Colin, Colin, why you got so many cake boxes in here? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta Google what a cake box is. This I is this is um genuinely unhinged. This this is a uh, what Colin McGeezer was, or I'm sorry, yeah, what uh, what those wild live streams were to to his sanity. This is like the live stream version of that. Like, yeah, this I mean, is, this has become the real fun of David at this point in his career. It's not even really what he's talking about anymore. It's just to see how deranged he gets. What, are cake boxes are literally just boxes you put cake in? I don't think in? David is in the mind state to be making innuendo. I think he's talking about just literal. Uh, he seemed to imply cake boxes <laughs> filled with hundred dollar bills. Uh huh. Spend any of this money? It's just lying around, mate. I'm trying to look at what to his chat said. I got a little bit wise to that. I said, "All right then, I'll bury the cake boxes out in the yard. Nobody's ever going to see them again." Okay, he's Mate, burying I still his haven't money. Found all of them. Some of them got all damaged. I don't know. But oh, he's lost his that's cake what it's money. Like when you're in the biz, <laughs> mate, just a little bit of talking out of school for you. When he says the biz, does he mean like that he's a mobster of some sort? I think... is Colin McGeezer a mobster? Yeah, well, he's a very powerful man. He's wow. everything Colin is everything David is not. <laughs> he's a very wealthy family man. He's not a gay pussy. No, he's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. You guys like fucking... that zany stuff? Of yes. course you do. Yes, we do. Of course we do. David, who wouldn't <laughs> like that zany stuff? You guys stuff? like to have fun, so do I. Man, wait, David's looking good. Look at the, look at of these beautiful teeth he's got here. Well, his teeth have <laughs> always never deteriorated because I think he got them whitened at the height of his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's... they've always they've always looked good. That's the reason he's always like his skin has always looked nice and tan. David may be insane, but this this is the best we've seen him look in quite some time. Look, maybe being Uncle Colin's good for him. Being uh, sometimes what being you is unhealthy. Be yeah. someone else. Yeah, it's a, sometimes you gotta it's yeah. dip out of sanity in order to correct course. Yeah, that is what alternate personalities are for. I don't remember the last time I've actually seen him smile. You guys like to have fun, so do I. 
<laughs> anyway, the real oh, we point joke of why we're here today oh, I wish I had is actually that you are about to undergo a massive shift in consciousness. Wow, that's good. I'm happy to be here. This is the real David Wilcock now, not the <laughs> co comedy characters, but... Uh, oh, this you know, isn't a bit. Okay. Oh, okay. He's trying to tell me to sell ads. Like, I'm not really that worried about selling ads while well, I'm actually live. Yeah, you need donations. <laughs> but anyway, ads, we bitch, are I want in a super very chats. interesting situation here. I've been fighting this sty on my eye. Uh, finally, it's good enough that I can go on camera and not completely hate myself. Wow. <laughs> Which I think is a good place to start. Not hating yourself? But yeah, that happens from time to time. You just go pick uh -oh. it up a oh, bit. he's trapped <laughs> in the character, man. Oh, no, he can't escape it. He's, he's become him. Yeah. Don't worry about it, mate. Oh, if it happens, no. just let it go. You don't have to be so concerned about everything all the time, bloke. Just get it right, mate. He's so been anyway, practicing it's been with fun. that cigarette. I, I wish think. he'd actually start smoking. Uh, it, it couldn't hurt at this That'd point. That'd be so sick if he started smoking cigarettes. Up here, I've finally, uh, in the last couple of days, I'm starting to have fun. Why? Because the winter season is finally over. We don't have wind. We're not in this crazy wow. hurricane type of situation where we get gusts going up to 70 miles an hour. I mean, it really is pretty amazing to live out here and be going through all this. Mm -hmm. Winter? <laughs> what's been happening to me is quite phenomenal. Uh -oh. uh, I spent two years more or less off camera, but during this time, I've been having some very, very intense experiences uh, with Archangel Michael. Oh, wow. Geez, which oh, I no. had no... Wait, I think those are the same lights we have, too. Probably. We're, we're becoming one. The idea that this is... Anything other than just some Catholic term for something that was seen in the Bible, but I didn't really know what that was. I hadn't really read about it, anything like this. But at the same time, uh, going back to here, back in 1996, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I began using it. the techniques of remote viewing. Do we really have to rehash uh, this, Dave? Okay, I will say it is very fucking funny to take three months off to prepare something and then just come back and do the exact same thing. See, for... I think it literally that first five minutes is what took that long. Yeah, the rest is this. It's just going to be a rehash. Yeah, this this was like took like a few days. Everything else is what took forever. Oh, I always forget how redundant this man is order to obtain information in the form of spoken verbal transcripts. And there was a long, rich legacy of this going back to sources such as Edgar Cayce. My that's, mother was very you. into a source called Jane Roberts that she claimed to have channeled an entity called Seth. Uh, and Seth the main speaks. Seth book that my mother was really interested in was A Nature of Personal Reality. And that work was fascinating because the basic principle is you create your own reality. So I grew up as a kid having my mother being really into this and taking it kind of for granted that, yeah, there's these extra dimensional beings and they can talk to us. And these are good things. You know, we want to have this knowledge because they really have some pretty incredible sh stuff to share with us. So as time really went on, hammer uh, in these camera changes early. I started he's to hear about them. remote viewing <laughs> That's like we know on he's the good. Bell he's... Show beginning in 1996. That's when I began listening and actually 95. And so the remote viewing was a military procedure oh, in which people... I think this, this, the next time I do a book, I think that's going to be the one. Ingo Swan has a, a book about remote viewing protocol, and I think that's where all these guys take this shit from. Go through a stringent set of protocols to create a mind-awake, body-asleep state. That means your body feels like it's asleep, right. Light is but a your mind is, is fully conscious. And you are going out there then with your astral body. You're doing astral projection, and you're viewing a remote target, hence remote wow. viewing. Well, well explained, Now, what's Dave. interesting about remote viewing is that people were getting 99% <laughs> accurate results That's even true. if the person who was guiding them during I the session like heard didn't about know what they were supposed to be looking at. Well, it's just, I get, mean, if that were the case, the military never would have stopped. Why yeah. would they? All both parties would get, the guide and the remote viewer, was a couple pieces of paper that had uh, numerical coordinates on them. It started out as uh, latitude and longitude, and then over time they just became random numbers. But even if neither person had the numbers, the remote viewer would still find out what the target was correctly when this process was being properly used. Right. So for my my reading on this, if I recall correctly, what was actually happening is they did seem like the the descriptions the remote viewers were giving of these places were like slightly 
better than average. So right. they were like they were doing better than you would expect for someone just to guess. But like it was so randomized that it, it just they stopped because it wasn't helpful. Like, yeah, if you're only right an extra five percent of the time, that's not very useful if you can't know when that five percent is occurring. Yeah. And this is very, very amazing. Oh, did you like my new lights, by the way? This is kind of like a Turkish thing. It seems to be emblematic of a UFO contact. I felt like it just nudged in right there perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, sure you did, David. Yep. That's, uh, that's what that lamp is. It's good if I hydrate, so let's keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> remote viewing was a very practical uh, technique oh, that had been widely geez. perfected. And then in the 95-96 era, we, gotta figure out we had various guests on our about. bell who were coming forward and sharing protocols. And one of them, mouth. Dr. Courtney Brown, wrote books about it. And the first one was called Cosmic Voyage. And I read the uh, appendix at the back that talks about how to do this. And I followed the principles and at the same time, I also was talking to someone online, uh, uh -oh. Joe Mason, <laughs> I was groomed who had a technique by... <laughs> called the dream <laughs> voice. And then AOL and he said, chaperone. if you can fall asleep in the morning and then you wake up and you still can remember your dreams, Maybe that's who Uncle Colin at that is. point, you are now it's getting this thing called him. what he called the dream voice. That's the man who molested him. And the whole him. idea yeah. behind that is that you want to have no awareness of what you're saying. You just kind of let the words speak. You listen in a 360-degree pattern around yourself. It's like there's a halo around your body. Uh, of sound and you could hear it in any of a number of directions and it's just little fleeting things that seem to come and go and they don't matter and I'd already noticed for years that I would have this as I was falling asleep or waking up it's a fairly common thing uh, they call it the hypnopompic state or the hypnagogic state wow, depending yeah. on whether you're doing it as you're falling asleep or waking up hypnagogic is when you're falling asleep Correct. so once I started to realize that there could be some data involved in this by talking to this guy, Joe Mason, it was November 10th, 1996, that I began listening to what it was saying and putting it down on This a is tape all recorder. Joe Mason's and fault. And it turns out that this yep. was a wonderful practice because immediately it began predicting the future with stunning accuracy, speaking in very cryptic ways. Uh -huh. There was a lot of code. There was a lot of symbolism. And I ended up doing this practice again. Uh, starting in 1996, and it continued uh, f f until 2000. I mean, it went on after that because I had clients who I was doing psychic readings for, but it didn't actually get to be the end of the books that I had to write now in the, in the 2020s. Uh, that didn't finish until 2000. Right. That just that just uh, you know kickstarted my memory. The whole reason for this theoretically is he did another pass through of all the Michael prophecies books. Right. So now we're supposed to be getting even more astonishing synchronicities. Right. In greater detail. Yeah. Well, which I would say, if the book predicted the future, but none of the shit you put in the books that are already out have come true. And then you got to revisit the book to then reinterpret it to well, find yeah, shit that just, happened. It wasn't done yet. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just such so a, as it says a here, shitty system for predicting the future. Prophetic books. Oh, now and, turned um, it into prophetic books. It's been books. something now, that took a great deal of finally, my time. I gotta now say. it's a time loop. This was not easy. Uh, it's been it wasn't good quite either. a life <laughs> sacrifice for me to do this. I'm just making sure I'm online, but it looks like everybody can hear me and everything is good. Um, you know, you never know with live, so it's just always good to check all these things. Anyway, the Michael contact, it, di it didn't even identify itself as Archangel Michael until probably the mid to late 1999 era. So I had 96, 97, and 98 that were huge because I was getting thousands of pages. And it was very interesting because it predicted the death of Princess Diana. It did it not. It predicted the heart attack of Mother Teresa. It did not. It predicted the Heaven's Gate mass suicide. None of this happened. <laughs> uh, what happened in the book is I believe he had a dream where a woman got crushed by a sign that fell off a building. And that was predicting Princess Diana's death in a car crash. Sick, dude. Or no, it had something to do with... Uh, Someone was on a horse, I think, and she got crushed. And then he said, "Prince, of Di uh, a car is a horseless carriage, which wow. means his dream was a prediction." I had called it Marvin Gate. Marvin and Gate. And so, <laughs> at the time that these it's things Marvin were Gay happening, there was lots of 9/11 prophecies that then came on? true in 2001. <laughs> so, on the day of 9/11, on the actual day when most people are freaking out, 
I got the first of a series of prophetic articles published on my website talking about dreams I'd already had that pinpointed that 9-11 was actually going to be taking place. Wow. I mean, with Again, that's not true, but this is the one where he had uh, the dream and then he called the FBI because <laughs> he told them uh, someone was going to like bomb bomb some New York Harbor or some <laughs> shit. Very, Which very he sunny. says got his phone tapped. I think he should take... One of the things people uh, don't emphasize enough, you know, Jay-Z is theoretically in the Illuminati. His right. album, The Blueprint, came out 9-11-2001. Accuracy. There you go. Over That's a free over game, again. David. Go ahead and uh, work that <laughs> in. So this was a, very interesting because it took, you know, years of my life. I, I was doing these readings, I don't know, three or four times a week, uh, writing my dreams down every day. But I was doing these readings that I called global readings because, first of all, the reading term comes from Edgar Cayce. A psychic reading means he was under hypnosis and he was speaking on behalf of some higher consciousness, which did occasionally identify itself as oh, no. Archangel Michael. <laughs> he was so good with the camera enough. changes. So Archangel Michael, when Archangel Michael showed up in the Edgar Cayce readings, there are eyewitness reports. Let me make sure my shirt is nice and straight. This is uh, another thing he never seems to recognize is the fact it, it, the fact that he believes himself to be Edgar Casey and Archangel Michael showed up in previous Edgar Casey readings. Like, of course, he's going to think it shows up in his readings, yeah, too, because he thinks he's the same guy. As I say this, there's eyewitness reports of his body levitating off the ground. Yeah, I'm sure and that's true. And having this enormous booming voice, sort of like you cranked up the bass subwoofer on your stereo way too much. Wow. And it was so intense that the walls were shaking, the windows were shaking, the windows were opening and closing sometimes. What a very you true story. You could hear forks and spoons very and real. knives rattling in the silverware drawer, as well as plates and dishes inside the kitchen. Uh, objects occasionally flew through the air. Sometimes doors opened and closed, slammed. Sometimes windows opened and closed. And the feeling of this sound going through your body and all these things happening was so intense. It was very common for people to be crying. It was very common <laughs> for people to go into a state of ecstasy and kind wow. of spastic. Well, ex I mean, that's probably how David explains away his weepiness these days. Is that yeah, it? no, he's in ex ecstasy. Yeah, it's so See, powerful. Because you just don't expect Couldn't help but cry anything while like this is ever going to happen to you. And then when it does, it's just so <laughs> phenomenal. So... Again, his secretary, Gladys Davis Turner, said that she Author noticed that his Diaries. body was levitating. Isn't that interesting? She noticed the body was levitating. So this is a very fascinating story. The Archangel Michael contact through Edgar Casey. that this is when really strange and scary but wonderful things were happening that we would normally associate with miracles. So... It was when I was doing these readings, and basically by mid nineteen. Notice the the slyness there, where he's like, "What Edgar Casey was doing, that was a miracle." He right. doesn't say, "I'm doing miracles," but he's saying the guy he is in the past did miracles. Yeah. Ninety nine, the source identified he itself as Archangel Michael, fully committed to being Jesus, and well, that's the same source that Edgar he's, Casey he's with had a lot. levitating his body now. I'd also, by this point, it was actually by October 1997, found out that I had a stunning facial resemblance to Edgar Casey. It's the best that any reincarnation well, You should really mention this more. You never well, bring it up. Seen. You now, also Dr. really Ian aged Stevenson out of it. In the 19... <laughs> That's true. It was, it was twink death. He, yeah, he you don't look like him anymore, began. bud. Uh, Dr. Ian you Stevenson like Sam found Cassell. <laughs> over 3,000 yeah, children like in the AI Middle generator East, mostly Sam Cassell in the Middle White. East, who could remember... <laughs> or claim that they could remember their past lives. Once they remembered details, he went and no, validated those Dr. details. Ian and Stevenson in some cases, there was shit. one girl <laughs> who remembered the names of like 22 or 23 different people, uh, remembered exactly what furniture was in the house, what paintings were on the wall, what the house looked like. At risk of turning into David and continually repeating myself, the reason why these people are able to do this is I believe in only like two of the several thousand cases they addressed. Yeah. Only, only in like I think uh, two to eight, something like that, did the people not have contact with the people they were claiming to be the reincarnation of. So it's not that special. It'd be like you know saying uh, what the furniture in your friend's living room looks like. It's not because yeah. you're psychic. It's because you've been there when you know them. Yeah. 
So some of these kids really got a great deal of information coming through that was way beyond anything they could they have had. They also tended to pick for, rich families. Maybe they remembered this other Very lifetime convenient. as if it was part of their existence. Well, that seemed to be what it was. It was a straight ahead past life memory. And what was so fascinating about this was that it went on for, you know, many, many years. And over time, he began to realize that when kids remembered being someone else, if you looked at pictures of that someone else, and then you looked at pictures of the kid, especially as they grew into adulthood, it, they looked very, very similar. Their faces were almost identical. And this wasn't just one or two things. This was the rule, not the exception. I, everyone's yeah. face is kind of the same. We all yeah, have, we are all people. Yeah, we all kind of have the same face. Happened over and over again with the, the as two he would do these forensic follow-ups on the actual information that he's looking for. So this was really incredible. The idea that these children had somehow remembered being this other person and then they look like that person and they remember the experiences of being that person. It does feel kind of racist. This is very Dave, it's just like all the Indian people look alike. Yeah, You're never what gonna do you mean? <laughs> it really does get back into multidimensionality. Just walking up to random Indians and the idea like, Are you the reincarnation of the Casey's work and then you get Sorry, into it's later hard to works, tell. my personal favorite being the Law of One, which came through from 1981 to 1983. We're familiar. For the most part. It was one in 1984, I think. Uh, the Law of One and sources like the Casey readings say that we have, or in the Seth books with Jane Roberts, I mentioned that, they say we have a multidimensional personality. There is a part of us that exists in some sort of higher reality. And in that higher reality, we do not exist as flesh and blood. We exist as some form of energy. Uh -huh. And then that energy is not bound by linear time. That seems shitty. I don't want to just be like the, a floating orb in the, in the next life. Yeah. I, I kind of like the body part. The linear time factor that we see is a function of projecting into flesh, projecting into materiality. And it's very, very interesting. Like, how, okay. So the idea then is that we have simultaneous... Lives. This is one of the things the Seth books say, like in the Seth material. That's the one I really studied in, I guess, 1997, very 1990. strongly. <laughs> he says we have simultaneous lifetimes, simultaneous places where our soul uh, projects into that we call physical lives. I have heard recently the, the idea of quantum immortality, which is like when you die in one timeline your your soul just goes to your body in an alternate reality and yeah. possesses that wow. and which they i look think like each be other because apparently even though some of our facial features are derived from heredity there's another aspect of facial features that has to do with who you really look like as a soul <laughs> that there's a soul face that you have there's wow, a face your of your face. soul it sounds and like an rb singer each lifetime singer. <laughs> that you have illustrates that face. So even if you were to come back in a future lifetime, you're going to have basically the same face. Now I had, the first time I encountered this was when I had an out, out of body slash near death experience. I had my friend do a dangerous hyperventilation technique on me when I was in high school. Okay, wait a second, David, body... that's, that's not near death. All the kids used to do this too. It was like getting high. You hyperventilate, yeah. then you have someone fucking push on you and you black out for a second. Slumped down. I almost died. And I had a vivid flashback <laughs> of another trauma lifetime. Fucking queen. <laughs> and at the end of that lifetime, I was looking into a lotus and trying to look into my eyes and my face. And I saw my face, but I had African features. Oh, God, he's but black. It was my Blunt, eyes. White owl, and Philly blunt. Around this part of my face. Wow. Absolutely. Black speech. guys from Harlem. So that happened to me just in, in so high David school. David was once and I black. Didn't know what it was, I, I learned it was rap. Very interesting. He I, did, uh, in the book, he did, that's have, amazing. he did have a dream where he was black. And in that dream, he was obsessed with jewelry. Wow. <laughs> they called me the N word. Man, <laughs> but that I had. You black know, guys from Harlem eyes and a lot of the bone structure my face was similar so it was <laughs> very interesting and then only years so and years Hitler. later did I, I find extra out bone that there was foot. research about this by <laughs> That's why I was Dr. So fast. Ian Stevenson I kept stealing from a so again Dr. Stevenson's research <laughs> is truly phenomenal because it's anymore. showing us that we have a reiterating spirit 
and we get born into a body. We're born as a baby. We if anyone up- wants the full debunk on this, go watch our uh, David Wilcock debunked episodes because we go into Dr. Even- Ian Stevenson pretty yeah. extensively. Yeah. Eventually our bodies die. But the Casey reading said that there was a class for being on Earth. You're not just reincarnating over and over again for no reason. You're reincarnating because you need to learn something. And what you're actually learning, apparently, is first and foremost what the Law of One calls the first distortion of the Law of One. And that's a very confusing term. They use it all the time. But it means free will, and it also means the Law of Karma. So the universe has a built-in cosmic system to reveal to you the I hope fruits it goes back of how to where you the treat alien other people. <laughs> and this is the I was core hoping spiritual do that the teaching. Whole time. Of the, it would be that would have been real true mania. Wisdom yeah. That we find very heavily in Christianity, very heavily in Hinduism. They have the principle of ahimsa where you hurt no living thing. Very heavily in Buddhism which was influenced by Hinduism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Buddhism has monastic ascetic processes you know, very strict stuff about being a hermit. Get to the end and of the renouncing world. Renouncing physical possessions, renouncing all of the things that you would normally take for granted in, in a human lifetime. It is also important to remember he was on Twitter talking about how he needed to get this message out because yeah. it was so important for the end of the world. It was dire. And now we're 21 minutes in and he's just kind of meandering already. And it's only once. All of that signal is stripped away from the world. Unless us watching this bit is the most important thing. New uh, voice, which is the voice of silence, the voice of stillness. And in that voice of stillness, something is speaking that is not part of your linear lifetime continuum, but is actually a different type of thing. It's your multi dimensional personality. So the Casey readings, the Seth readings, the Law of One, many other sources <laughs> all would agree that there is a way to access your multidimensional personality. And from yeah, that drugs. vantage point, from that higher consciousness, you already know what you're doing here. You already know about the Law of Karma. So free will and the Law of Karma are the same thing. Your higher self is going to, this is the, another name for your multidimensional personality. Your higher self is going to steer you through Uh a learning class, a series of things to educate you about the importance of loving others. Because ultimately, in these philosophical traditions, there is only oneness. There is only one infinite creator, and there is only identity. That's a really, really heavy one. There's only identity. Wow. Heavy indeed. Woo! (laughs) Now, what that means is, your identity is not limited by the boundary of your skin Uh-oh. to the atmosphere. What? Your David's identity trans. is not even bound by the mass consciousness of all the humans on Earth or the mass consciousness of planet Earth or the mass consciousness of our sun and our solar system or even our galaxy. Oh, for Christ. Uh, David, really, I, it, we saw it in the interview with Dana Kapatrick, but we really yeah. are back to, like, high school weed talk. Yeah, we are. Like, what is reality, man? He's reverting back to his early stages. This is the most important message in the universe. That's why I think he's zooted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the law is... of one, we have only you identity. Gotta understand, and there's only identity dude. in the universe. <laughs> We're all, like, more than and our bodies. And this whole concept like, that ashes, you are in a separate body is, is actually dust false. To dust, bro. But it's the creator experiencing Please, itself. Money. This is what the <laughs> one infinite so consciousness in the decided hole, that it dude. wanted to do in order to have a diverse and robust <laughs> They're set gonna of experiences. They're going to take my house, man. <laughs> He's <laughs> back like to being a... Confidence a boost to help ease you it's no bueno, dude. <laughs> it also They're going to take everything, man. It's David Chilcock again. So that's again. what we're doing here. <laughs> we're vibes. all living together on vibe this planet, vibes are all thinking fucked, that we have separate man. identities when in fact we're part of a David mass Chilcock. consciousness. And this is again here to why harsh your mouth. people remember <laughs> things that they uh, didn't learn. And then multiple individuals invent the same things at the same time. This is called the multiples effect. Oh, my God. So in my Stop book, Source Field Investigations, everything. and in my new class, Sacred Science Say and something original. we talk about the multiples effect and all these strange he has things, like nothing the invention else. of the steamboat, the invention of the typewriter. He's like the, the comic the... who just le- literally never changes his set. He's a local comic, yes, yeah. who's been doing the same fucking set yeah. since 1987. He's got one set that crushed for a while. 
but now he's still just doing it. But you used to be able to get away with that before ever, like before you recorded everything and put it up. We've all we've seen this. We've seen this exact fucking yeah. thing over and over again. And as I mentioned when we went over synchronicity key, the reason why all these people came up with the same invention is because they were working on the same fucking problem, and there's one answer to that problem. Yeah, you don't two plus two always equals four. If we both get that answer, it's not because we're psychic. It's because that is the answer to the question. Thermometer. Uh, the invention mm -hmm. of the oxygen molecule, the invention of the telescope. Well, they didn't invent the oxygen <laughs> molecule. Multiple individuals don't, don't discovered these it. things pretty much at the same time. And it's a very curious phenomenon because you say to yourself, you know, what's causing this? Where is this coming from? Common sense. It would appear to be the result of us having cloud computing. But that there's yeah, a level of your mind <laughs> oh, from that the cloud. Yeah, all I the see. information that's you have access logical. to. And it biases it specifically... For your personal sense of identity. Is that what happened with internet porn? <laughs> you have a personal sense of identity. It's a bunch cloud, of dudes just they tap into the cloud like, you know what we need to do? Having. Uh, put porn and on demand on the internet. That all the thoughts that you're having are yours. And we haven't had any training on God. a societal level. Yeah, geez, this is a dangerous road to go down once you start doing the my thoughts aren't my own thing. On how to differentiate our own thoughts versus the thoughts of others. But as you become, well, he's been wrangling this and, and Uncle Colin. Yeah, I, I I want to be very clear to anyone listening: the thoughts in your head are your own. Yeah, They're I not... don't care how funny the bit in your head is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th those are another... your thoughts. Yeah, those are your thoughts. It's not another person in your head. I get that he's Australian <laughs> and has a good life, but still, you. Yeah, there's not a, a Scottish Australian man astral projecting his thoughts into your head. Yeah, psychic you're just stone. Train in psychic awareness. It's extremely important. To ask yourself, is this mine or someone else's? What a what terrible am I really experiencing? piece of advice. Yeah, what a, what a fracturing of reality of when you're like, you, you know, I think the best way to look at your thoughts is which are mine and which are coming from somewhere else. <laughs> if I don't like them, someone else effects. is thinking. Now, when I think of killing everyone around me, is that my thought or is that someone else? Uncle Collins buying ammunition. Yeah. <laughs> when I want to go shoot up a school, <laughs> is that me or is that really someone else? Can be affected when other people are in pain, when other people are in fear. And so one of the main reasons why I needed to get back on this chair mm -hmm. and be doing talks right God, now is that the energetics... God, he can make so much money if he gaming are... streams. I, I also... Didn't he say he was going to pre-record this and then now he's doing it live? I like, think he realizes he needs to super chat money. I think he also... He needs to feed off the energy of the yeah. audience. But you're right. I don't know why... Like, he could just... Especially if you're just going to retread the same ground over and over again. Just fucking stream every day. Who gives yeah, a shit? Yeah, just play video games, dude. Play Helldivers really too. So as a result, people are now having a lot more of the negativity as well as a much greater springboard for awakening. But there's people now dealing with various aspects of spirituality that I'm very familiar with. But for most people, they're incredibly unfamiliar with it. And they're not really aware of what they have to do or how to handle it. I wish he would explain what he means. So before I go any further, I do want to say that all of this has turned into seven prophetic books. Which are available for purchase. And I now have seven <laughs> yeah. books okay. and 11 videos <laughs> available at thedisclosure.com. So what do I mean by that? I mean, Do you that think we... people were doing this with the Bible back in the day? Is they're like, this is the word of God available for the low, low price? I mean, yeah, the early Catholic Church, product, absolutely. This is what That's I did true. for the last two and a half years, was just write these seven books where I took we know, David. the Archangel yeah. Michael readings from 96, 97, 98, 99, and 2000. And I discovered over the last two and a half years that as I would unseal them, meaning as I would reread them for the first time in many cases since I'd looked at it in 90, 98, 99, whatever, they were predicting the, all the stuff that's going on now. Well, very clear turns out that's not indications. So true. I don't know if I'd say that. All of the most recent presidents back going back in history, very specific long narratives on each one of them, including the current uh, Joe Biden. There's lots of stuff about him in there. There's several references to Kamala Harris, and it's so amazing. It, the The scope of what the books are saying has kind of left me stunned. I, I've been letting them go out there and be read. I was stunned, too. And people are really having yeah. some very stunned exciting by awakenings the stupidity. from this. The comments not, and not the feedback for the same the reason. are really extraordinary. So this is the only product I have right now. So I just want to put no. this out there that, that if you put in ass. the code Jubilation, oh, wow, there's a discount you're going to get a very, code. very generous discount. $83? Everything. Wow, he didn't sell enough. Uh, no, no. It's also, yeah, I think initially... 
Uh, That's what, like almost 33%. It probably is 33%. <laughs> it almost assuredly is. But the, there was a period of time when it initially came out, you could buy it for, I think, 75 bucks with the discount code. And then when that went away, I think he started selling them for like three hundred dollars. Nice. And I'm gonna guess not a lot of people pulled the trigger on that. So yeah. now we're back to thing that we have on video is included in this deal. So it's actually oh, and something video, that course. really helps me. And it's at thedisclosure.com. You mean money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really helps we're all still of us. getting trashed by the so-called oh, DS. We really do need us. your help. Uh, and now you're about to see why. In 1999. Sort of the crown jewel of the micro prophecies was that he finally. predicted that there would be a coup over the military industrial complex. And that really did not seem possible as uh, of 1999. Still I was aware super of the possible. UFO cover up. I certainly had read lots of books on UFOs by this point. Perhaps I was getting my own remote viewing them. stuff. Yeah. It was predicting the future. And it clearly seemed to be some type of human, angelic, extraterrestrial. It, it talked a lot of Christianity. I wasn't really wanting to have a Christian source. I wasn't asking for it to talk about the Prince of Peace, but it did that a lot. I didn't ask for it to be a Catholic yeah, saint did that or two Catholic your will. saints because there's two <laughs> no, people speaking. No, no, stop talking the about the Lord. Speaking. There's yeah. Archangel Michael he, he and Saint Lucia. Prince of Peace. <laughs> so this was a very <laughs> weird thing because I stopped doing it uh, on the global level in around, I don't know, 2001-ish. Um and I did clients up until 2005. I had yeah, a business did online. Banana from sandwich. 1998 to 2005, <laughs> where I actually did client readings. And people had a very, I mean, I had a very, very high success rate with my client readings. Almost everybody who got one, with just one or two exceptions, came, was very happy. <laughs> and I also At noticed that my clients would determine <laughs> the quality of the reading. In I other words, how deeply I went in a trance. If you're one of those two people who do not enjoy their old David Wilcock reading, please reach out to us. I would love to <laughs> Well, I was on the phone with them, and what I would say was almost entirely a function of their level of spiritual advancement and how much they could meditate. So what a sick move, too, where it's like if the reading's not really good, it's the client's fault. It's your fault, with, dude. You should have been chiller. This source, it's like, okay, you know, the, you we are co-creating this experience. Let me get away from the chair. Yeah, we've all heard Bashar. We're co-creating this experience, so like, Greetings you know, let's, let's try to have a positive <laughs> flow between the two of us. And in those cases, people got astonishing things. There was a, a case where a woman was writing poetry and songs, and it began quoting from her poems, and then, you know, explaining why she had written these things and what was the subconscious message of it. Okay, we're a half an hour in. This is good. So again, you know, in spite of all these other things that were going on with clients, in 1999, as I'm publishing this stuff, I had my own website. I put it online. Oh my and by God, 1999, Michael, Archangel Michael is saying that there's going to be a coup over the military industrial complex and specifically regarding the UFO cover-up. Wow. That this whole idea of not getting the truth would be over and that we're now going to get real information unlike anything we've ever had before. And in fact, when you go through the Michael prophecies, he's saying that there's going to be a mass human ET contact. And I really didn't even remember most of this stuff. Honestly, I would be entranced when I transcribed it. And then in 1999, I started uploading all of it onto my website in raw form, which is almost unreadable. Uh, that's yeah, why you really know. need it to be so formatted, especially to explain all the prophecies and everything. And in some cases, I have to rearrange the dreams and make them easier to understand, explain things that I... Oh, so you just you know, manipulate it, them to, to fit your end. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, he had uh, uh, he has a nice habit of just inserting crucial words that were not in the original yeah. dreams in order to make it fit. Explain some things in dreams that I'd forgotten, but almost always it's just out of the transcript. And in the dreams, I might improve... The sentences a little bit, but when it comes to the <laughs> readings, I don't change anything. A bit by entirely and changing the meaning. What's happened is again, it created seven books. So at thedisclosure.com is where that's located, and I really do hope you'll help us out because right now is the best time to hit the ground running. He's turning into with Alex the videos Jones and with the books. The I mean, this is where it's all he coming needs to a head. Money. I always Everything that I was folks. told about he by needs, Michael in the nineties, he said of money. that there's going to be a complete defeating of the UFO cover-up. But it wasn't until I unsealed the books his alpha brain now, his, uh, beginning brain in 2022, that I realized what the real message was.
And we'll talk about that in a minute. But getting back to this, yeah, God forbid we he did predict point. this coup over the military industrial complex. And then as of, I mean, I saw various pieces of evidence online, but it really was in 2009 that I met this insider, Pete Peterson. No, oh, Christ. And right. he told me <laughs> that he was part of this thing called the Alliance. Well, Pete said always a lot of things. The yeah, you know, Pete liked to or talk. I guess I came up with the name because it just needed a name and it seemed like a good name. I'm not really sure how it came about, but yeah. anyway. Pete's a talker. We were talking about this thing Most called of the, the plan, is and lies. it was this idea yeah. that ever since the 1950s, as I've said many times, Howard Hughes started to wonder why he was losing all of his aerospace contracts to competitors, even though he had better prices, he better insane. products, etc. Yeah, because he was or peeing his ideas in were bottles. Getting stolen, <laughs> knocked off, ripped off. And we've been seeing that as we well. We have with, to have compared Spotty David to Aerospace. Howard Hughes before, right? He really is going the full Howard Hughes. Absolutely. Developing I mean, craft, peeing in his bathtub. Yeah, bathing in piss. Becoming a recluse. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion. Apparently there's a correlation between it's piss and flight. It's very fascinating, actually, but we could talk about that later. I hope David builds so the So Howard Hughes goose. started to do investigative research using female sex couriers. What? To what? find out why he was losing all these contracts, and then he found out that there was an organized group involved in all this and that they were essentially they had something called vertical integration <laughs> all right yeah we gotta we gotta bring out call in mate so nice if, if you want to understand a bit Hell about yeah. uncle colin's gonna tell you okay, about let's, sex let's slaves talk uncle a little colin's bit gonna here, tell you, you how they fucked my ass <laughs> and they come together who molested me? And they're vertically integrated, and you don't think that they're vertically know each integrated. Other, that's mate. when you the don't penis goes in that a butthole vertically, vertically, vertically vertical integration. and you're integrated it's where you come. It's the secret combination, but mate. No it's all integrating these different society. things that you wouldn't we think We can all just integrate the schools. No miscegenation. <laughs> if we let the savages in, we're going to lose our culture. The human Uncle body Collins is actually is not now, a Uncle thing. Now, Uncle Collins is not a racist. I'm just a white realist. No, I'm just... I'm just going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> Come on. you got to allow me a few of those here and there. I'll I allow you all of them. them. Do so, it the whole time, please. I wish I'd never Too stopped. bad all the videos of Pete Peterson were removed by YouTube for speaking the truth. Please speak more of Pete Peterson, all he shared with you. Oh, my God. I knew I felt the... Pete Vibe, rub a silver spoon or other silver Shove on your it up style your ass. and it will go away. <laughs> People keep telling okay, him to rub well, metal I've on his face. been doing the colloidal silver. <laughs> I hope it gets that but, you disease know, it hasn't where it exactly turns blue yet, from so silver. I'm just trying to do my best here. <laughs> Jeez, I miss these talks. The code is Jubilee. No, the code is Jubilation. Uh, let me go back to that. Oops. Thank you for asking. Promo code Jubilation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, folks, uh, right, if you don't go and buy the books, we're so going to go code. out of and business you don't need again. This could be my last broadcast. Um, I forgot I forgot about that part of Alex Jones. If, if you don't go buy, go buy the books, I, I'm just going to shut it down. Yeah, I'm just going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> don't know, I love the crew. I love but, the crew. <laughs> I love everyone here. But but if we don't sell more brain force, I, I'm going to kill myself. Let's go to break. <laughs> Roger Stone, when we come back it with the war room. A, <laughs> extremely generous, uh, you know, what I'm offering compared to... Any other deal I've done before, it's only going to be for a limited time. Brings no, it down it's to because you were vastly overcharging but again, you've before. Got 11 and a half hours of video that I did with over a thousand slides called wow. Look how Science his Micro eyes Prophecies. Are. And it's <laughs> amazing it. because it's loaded with Ear that, he's just all been of this crying. knowledge. <laughs> About what the he's props probably is, a little bit of both. Yeah, he's not stoned, he's just sad. <laughs> that Archangel Michael brought to us, because in addition Uncle to Colin bringing doesn't in the cry, readings, though. I was guided through a very <laughs> prolonged Colin's amount strong, of scientific research. A lot of it came out of the law of one, and I just felt really fascinated. So, somebody sweep says, "I missed my boy." Coconut heal, coconut oil heals a lot. David, no, please don't do the English accent. Not everybody <laughs> loves it. Just do you. No, do the no, English accent. English Only accent. do the accent. Some people really like it. Thank so you. You just have to kind of rail with it, mate. Were those people? Yeah. Does Archangel? <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh. oh my God! Ah, we're someone rid got of him. That guy. <laughs> oh, we're getting rid of that guy. Yeah. Damn it! I, so I wish we're, we could. We're not interested Go check in the chat. Oh wait, yeah. Would it be there? Or would it be removed in the uh, the replay? You know, that's not um, really what we're doing. I, you could probably see it. Let's see if we can uh, find. I'll just look for names that are familiar to me because they're they're probably uh, people from our general community doing it. It does seem, look, it seems very positive. Oh, I guess it, it would probably be under all messages, wouldn't it? Yeah. Here. Uh, thanks, David. You're... Now it seems 
maybe uh maybe you got him Damn. but uh anyway let me let me just get back to where we were because there's some really cool stuff going on so um again I was briefed on this plan by Pete Peterson. Now, Pete Peterson... Wow. <laughs> Where is my heart, Yeah, it's Clark a very, David. very strange <laughs> set of information that I got from Pete Peterson because in his reality, there are deep underground military bases, or D-U-M-B-S. Well, he got that and, acronym uh, right. <laughs> those are actually much more plentiful than we realized. Pete said there was over 270 of them that Pete were just said he also won a Russian medal for American science. Portion of the military <laughs> well, complex. you can't prove he didn't. And I've he also, also said heard he from a number of insiders, and this goes back for many years, and many different people who I interviewed in great depth, that there are extraterrestrial humans, people who That's look like humans, but they project into physical human bodies, and they, or, or in some cases, they're from other planets, wow. and they look like you know, human-like, but they're different. They we have Black all guys the, apparently from Harlem. people with all different pastel colors, pastel yellow, pastel pink, aliens. all <laughs> these different interesting Look at combinations. Their aliens. And uh, that's all part of the reality. There's, according to Sergeant Clifford Stone, who was one of the Disclosure Project witnesses on May fifth, two thousand one, or May it was May 9th, two thousand one. He said there was 57 different varieties in a field handbook that he'd gotten from yeah, this we, we know, the Heinz 57 in the Air Force. And these 57 varieties were almost all human, but this is what they were seeing inside various ships that had crashed wow. here. So it's fascinating because it turns out that we have a robust human community. We now know from NASA's own data that there's something like 80 million Earth-like or 80 billion Earth-like planets. Wait, oh, 40... wait a second. Though, doesn't David believe he's an alien? Wouldn't he? He'd be amongst those those Earth aliens, wouldn't One, he? I would assume so. Well, I don't know if he's still an alien. He might not be an alien anymore. 80 billion Earth-like planets just in our galaxy. Think about that. At least 40 billion Earth-like planets with water, and then it appears that DNA, according to my scientific research, it's just intrinsic in the background Scientific energy of space research. and time itself. If you have drops of water, they will naturally form DNA in them. Oh, my God. No, the they won't. <laughs> this, is, this is the guy who uh, saved some sort of... He recorded a glass of water with shit in it, and he saved it as a wave file, and he sent it to some other guy. And the other guy said when he played it for his glass of water, the, the content spontaneously generated. Right. No, they have no proof that that happened. Oh, proof. Oh, yeah, we, don't, yeah. we don't actually have that. Well, who needs it? They all yeah. say it happened. They didn't record any of it or provide right. evidence. Oh, but... you, just, you don't want to just believe me? Water that has DNA in it. So the law of one talks about this. And it says that photons are much more than just light packets that travel through the air. Photons are geometric vibratory packages of information, which when they become second density photons, they carry the information to make animal life, animals, plants, everything else except humans. Third density photons carry the information to make human life. Oh, he's really going and with fourth we're all just density beams photons of light. carry the information to make a new type of human being with apparently a much more energetically dense body. Wow. So this is one of the strange things is that the esoteric work that we're looking at says that this is all going to lead to a non-catastrophic global ascension. And the global ascension involves the return of our Heinz 57 human family, our galactic human brotherhood and sisterhood. They actually Rule have the a higher ethical standard because they've learned the law of karma, absolutely, and they see it as a mathematical certainty. It has to be followed. It's always worked out. And as what you could think of as angelic beings, this is very important. Uh -huh. You are constantly surrounded by living, intelligent, higher beings. You can't necessarily perceive them in the uh -oh. room around you, but they're very much there. They're this... very much present. Oh, well, that's a dangerous thing to think, too. But this is the sort of logic that led to him, you know, apologizing to his urine because it was killing bacteria. Yeah. And they are conveying information to you at all times. They're at least, at the very least, sending you love. And so when you tune into the feelings of love, according to the law of one, you're going to feel more of what these beings are sending you. And you're going to have the ability to amplify that love. They also say in the law of one 
that the concept of two angels on your shoulder or an angel and a demon is exactly the way the universe really works. Wow. That's, this that's is a good very, science. very curious thing. Riveting. He's using Looney Tunes logic for his esoteric shit. When you are living in, in truth with love and peace and forgiveness and harmony, and you're not lying to people and you're not deceiving people and you're doing your best to and be a good person and you're not taking money to produce hover cars that you actually can't produce honor and you're scamming to do the your government duty of with, New York with a sense tax of money. <laughs> true responsibility these are all different levels of ageless wisdom spiritual discipline the disciplined personality is a very important one as you get up into like the fifth chakra or the uh, throat what? chakra you gotta be called. disciplined with That's your throat. associate also with the <laughs> color yeah, David, of white blue. Yeah, David, I bet you got that throat chakra. Red, red. The next one is orange. Then you, you got that good the throat plexus, chakra. Green for the heart, light blue Woo! for the throat, <laughs> that dark throat blue for the chakra. pineal gland, third eye, and then violet for the crown. These colors actually do carry some type of photonic corollary. I so we are now getting hit with light. fourth density so, green yes. photons. They're not green to our eyes because we're only looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, but they are green photons. So as we've talked about before, there was an experiment in Russia that was very central on this. Oh, please don't talk about Dr. Peter Garriott. the eggs of a frog yes. were zapped with a laser. <laughs> They're in, the eggs are inside a little hermetically sealed container. These are it's frog eggs. It's in Revelation. You shoot a laser people. that into He's another container out. with salamander eggs. He's yeah. never going to get anything new. Or actually, no. no, it was the other way around. You shoot He's the beam through out. the salamander eggs into the frog eggs. And that wow. salamander energy is transferred by nothing other than the laser. There's no actual air contact. They're both in hermetically sealed no, containers. No, it definitely works. Tissue samples. <laughs> but then these frog no, eggs no, over not, here is not frog. are transformed salamander. by the salamander laser light, what and they turn into... What no, is salamander the just frog act eggs like frog. Mutate into the part that never makes sense to me about this is... Couldn't he just reproduce this? He bought one of the lasers, I believe. This this fucking dude grifted him, and he got him to buy a laser for like $5,000. <laughs> it's like, David, take your $5,000 laser and f just repeat it. Do it well, on camera. David doesn't have the credentials. Do you know how much money you could make if you just took a laser and transformed a salamander into a different animal? What if that's all it did, though? <laughs> that's the only all thing it could do, do is turn frogs into salamanders. It doesn't actually do anything else. The most useless superpower. Yeah, like, I've invented this amazing technology. Now, unfortunately... I hope you're all fans of salamanders. Yeah. To salamander eggs. And so this, to me, is a very compelling demonstration of there was a no mechanism demonstration. for species he, evolution. He didn't have any. It was totally overlooked by Charles recordings Darwin. Recordings of this. Charles Darwin, of course, gives us this concept that evolution is the result of random mutations. But as I talk about in Sacred Science of Michael Prophecies in far more depth, it's not necessarily random. We've tried to in mutate fruit run. flies; they breed the fastest of any species. Nothing that we've ever done does anything to them except to make more fruit flies. And certain mutations that we create where they lose their eyes, for example, there's a self-correcting mechanism. In other words, if we create a mutation where we have two parents who don't have eyes and we breed them, within no more than five generations, no matter what, their eyes always come back. So there appears well, to be some study. type of living <laughs> field of energy that tells the universe how to make a fly and if the fly doesn't have eyes, the eyes within five generations will be restored in the DNA code. And wow. that's so the why the military-industrial complex <laughs> is going to fail. First of all, what he's saying is bullshit. They've done studies with, uh, they're called like salt and pepper moths or something, and they're able to breed them to be a specific color relatively quickly by exerting environmental pressure on them. You can do it. I mean, you could literally carry this out in like 72 hours, right. but not... DNA code, Not when it's missing, you can't This get is the problem when you study a bunch of fringe science, but then you just stop studying science in, like, 1998. Well, and also when you don't understand it. That well, I guess that is the biggest thing, right, is yeah. you should probably know what you're talking about. But, yeah, there's actually, uh, you're never going to believe this, there's been a lot of research done in the intervening years between yeah. 1998 and 2024. <laughs> We've learned That's some things. That's what you would think if it was just like a book, and you read He's some pages out of the book, you're never going to see those pages now. again. He's but that's not what DNA is really doing. DNA is actually tuning into something. No, it's not. And as a result, you're not getting the same effect that you thought you would get. You're getting a frog egg turning into a salamander egg. You are not. Mutating in one generation, they grow up into adult salamanders. 
-hmm. and they have no evidence of ever having come from a frog. Wow. They can breed with this. Uh, so that part there about there being no evidence later on that it ever occurred. It's the same thing from the guy who transformed. I believe it was a uh, he turned a, a rat into a cattail wow. or a cat into a rat tail, something like that. And then he said what happened is before anyone else could see the evidence, it magically transformed back, leaving no proof that it wow. ever happened. Crazy how that happened. It's, it's crazy that all this guy's research magically can't be recorded yeah, wild with other adult salamanders and they give birth to salamanders so this is very very I very mean, I curious i would expect salamanders to give birth to salamanders and i realized right yeah. then and there that this explained the so-called missing link which we've never found to how we get from a, a doubling of the sky size of the skull as we get towards uh some of the more recent proto-man forms or proto-human it's a, there's a there's a sudden increase in the brain size by almost double, and it happens basically out of I hope David goes full stone ape theory and just gets really so, into mushrooms. When I That'd started reading cool. Law of One, we find out I mean, at least that heard there are these well, twenty five thousand year cycles, and Pete Peterson confirmed this on his own that these higher level human ETs are very aware of some type of cyclical pulsation uh, that lasts twenty five thousand years. And I thought he said it was uh, 27,200 in the book. insider that I was making fun of with the glasses had talked about <laughs> how there are, you know, beings who very much pay attention to this 25,000 year cycle because apparently, according to him and many others, there's a big solar flash at the end of the cycle and it cooks everything in your solar system. You know what? I'm shocked he hasn't mentioned the fact that there were solar flashes or solar flares like two weeks back and that the entire AT&T network dropped for a few hours. That seems yeah. right up his alley. I would have thought he'd clung on to that more. Every 25,000 years, you just get <sighs> this big crazy thing that happens. So Although I guess maybe it's, some comments for maybe a it's not here. good for him because it... Who's the scientist that big Area 51 that wears a gold crown with a crystal in the middle? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> they don't hear what he even says. They just say it hasn't happened yet. They haven't looked into anything clearly. Uh, Are they talking about us? <laughs> maybe. Everyone hit the button for David. Thank you for all of your great info, infinite love and blessings, fellow sovereign soul, siblings, fellow multidimensional, infinite, eternal. Sovereign soul is the even more insufferable version of the sovereign citizen. Just yelling about uh, Divine, yelling at the devil that they can't are, control you. They are the kookier version. This is how AI optimizes my schedule. So I have Shut a project up. coming up. So I start by listing the project. Yeah, you're not that important, a dude. Shut up. We're learning about the fall of the so military the industrial point is complex. That yeah. If you look at the messages that the law of one is sharing, that many other sources have shared, there is this 25,000 year cycle, which according to multiple insiders I spoke to, there is, they do expect a massive solar energy release at the end, and they thought it was catastrophic. And so this seems to explain why many uh, governments didn't even seem to care about pollution <laughs> or committing crimes. They thought that this big event was gonna happen and it's, it's gonna ruin everything on earth and, and we're not gonna make it anyway. So uh, I like that David that pretends he wasn't one of the people promoting these this. Books. I know. Until like the three years thing ago. That he said is that this is all leading to a non catastrophic global ascension. Now, when we say global, what he's actually saying is that if you look at, for example, the teachings of Christianity, the idea is if you follow the basic principles of Christ, right, just to use this software, if you will, this, this religious software. If you follow these basic principles of love thy neighbor as thyself, you know, kindness, generosity, patience, forgiveness, that you will, this is, again, you know, getting into the real weeds of Christianity. They say you will be born again, and a lot of people have a hard time with that unless they're evangelicals. But wow. we don't really necessarily know what that means. And I think that the it's another reference to ascension just like the concept of rapture. Now, oh, typically, that's what being born again you is. think of the Christian concept of rapture, and a lot of times it's, it's built around passages in the book of Revelation that have the number 144,000. And there's this idea that if you read the book of Revelation, as I did in my last Crop Circle Prophecy video, it's in Revelation, There's some pretty people. compelling stuff in there that looks like the world's going to be destroyed. And it looks pretty scary. And then in Revelations 11, 11, it says, after the three and a half days, the righteous ones who were struck down 
by the masses rose up. Does it feel and like fear he's speaking the differently than normal to you? then rose up into the feels air. a little more like he's and reading. in that same hour, earthquakes there's, shook the earth. There's a different that's energy a, that's to this. That's a sloppy this. paraphrase. I don't have it exactly, but I'm, I'm in the ballpark. So they rose up into the air. Uh, struck fear into the hearts of many because apparently they're glowing and they have these big booming voices and stuff. Uh, and in like that same Edgar hour, Kasich. earthquakes shook the earth. So now you have 39,830 denominations of Christianity all competing with each other. It's literally Do almost 40,000. That seems like and way too many. And many of them are kind of apocalyptic. Well, some of them are, and they, they mm. want to get into what's going to happen in the end times. You know, are Talk we, about Israel. And, and the idea would be, well, yeah, I want to be in the group that's with the chosen people. You know, I want to make sure that I'm chosen too. And so if I play along with this stuff and if I say what they tell me to say and I show up on Sunday, then maybe I'm, I'm going to get to make it. Okay, that's a, a very traditional fundamentalist paradigm, which most other people who are not into that paradigm probably laugh at it or scoff at it think it's something to make fun of. I'm not really making fun of it at all. I'm actually saying that if Jesus had not succeeded in his mission, then most of the planet would have been lost and the prophetic timeline in the book of Revelation would have happened. But according to what is being said in the Michael prophecy... Yeah, wait a second, though. Jesus died before the end of Revelations. I've read the book. Yeah, he uh, was already dead. But it's also, it is interesting to me that he... he posits that there's these sort of cosmic events where that require forgiveness for the world to continue and he's now put the crucifixion of christ on the same plane as uh bill clinton getting his dick sucked pretty much those are the two same events in history that yeah. each required forgiveness and again with this incredible amount of prophetic data on page after page after page through all seven books it's just staggering and I am going to be, you know, in, as I get more comfortable with this now, I'm going to be putting out more of it oh, no. into videos <laughs> and stuff. I just needed to get my feet wet here and get back on the camera. But the point, again, is that it's leading to a non-catastrophic global ascension. So you've said. And that means that if Jesus succeeded in his mission, according to what Michael, Archangel Michael is telling us, if Jesus succeeded in his mission, that means everybody on earth, or almost everybody, except for maybe very, very few, who are just really diabolical, evil folks, Yes. <laughs> but just about everybody on earth is going to go through something that he calls the first wave of ascension. Now, what he explains is that the sun is going to give off some type of energetic change. Wow. And <sighs> when that happens, we are now in a completely multidimensional consciousness. Uh, am I having a stroke or is he basically just re been repeating the same idea for like the last 10 minutes? I'm pretty sure he's just rehashing the same shit. Because he just keeps saying that... that we're going to ascend non-catastrophically, yeah. but he hasn't said anything in addition to that in some time. It really is unprecedented. I don't even think if you've had experience with mind-altering substances of Boy, any variety, <laughs> yeah. even the most outrageous psychedelic entheogens, uh -huh. I don't even think that that really adequately describes what this is You're i wrong. have decided well, to you haven't done enough space. yeah hey, smoke because a, part of smoke what was going through milligrams of DMT my experience and list that. here is i had an apparition of mother mary show up in my kitchen it was very yeah, incredible we, we know in fact it's probably the most intense thing i've ever had happen to me uh, yes and he went and cried in the closet after it yeah. happened uh, if that's not a metaphor i don't know what it is it <laughs> looked like the virgin mary of guadalupe where you see mary inside this oh god this there's lens. a mexican in my house <laughs> i was about to say it was just his cleaning lady he's like oh my god oh. The, the holy mother has arrived <laughs> see see please see david i, I hear the i clean, clean your kitchen to clean your room because uh, your wife she has, left you, know, you. The same, so you need me the... to clean the house because your wife she says she says she cannot stand you anymore. <laughs> she says you are not too hot. She says <laughs> she says you she are dickhead. Is so she going to leave? <laughs> she says you you use all the money on the flying car. <laughs> And now you in there, so she's going to leave. <laughs> what a sweet gig to be the cleaning lady. You just show up, and the guy mistakes you for, for the Messiah, and then he cries in the closet. Pisces. And that was right before he, he had his smoke detector go off, and he called the fire department because <laughs> he was losing his mind. Uh, I forgot about that one when he was black for a day. Yeah, he said he was going to have to move because, <laughs> because uh, they, it was ruining his house. <laughs>
This is what I saw. I'm get out of here. Um, and what was strange about it, <laughs> too, officer, you don't understand. If I don't get rid of the sound, of I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and they were connected into everything. And I don't know everything. how the blacks do it. <laughs> and I saw how, as she moved, the rays black moved, guys and I could feel everything moving through me. But where it really got I mean, this is just was a that legitimate as this thing appeared, this apparition. I mean, I. To say it even as a gender is probably not accurate, but uh -oh. Oh, it was, was non-binary like Mary. Mary. <laughs> um, non I felt my consciousness <laughs> and I felt my sense of touch stretch out on the rays. And when your Groovy. tactile sensation first leaves your body, uh -huh. and even just like your face starts peeling off, like part of your it face sounds is like going a wet over dream. here. I, uh, I, I would be willing to bet a decent amount of money now that we've we've... I feel we have very good evidence David is smoking weed at the very least again. Yes, absolutely. This may have been when he first got back into it. Maybe he yeah. had an edible and got a little too... Woke up in the middle of the night a little fucking zooted. Look, I've taken some edibles and thought I was a Harry Potter. Yeah. So, I, you know, a little mushrooms and some edibles. And Part of your faces go over here. There's a strip casting. going this way. There's a strip going this way. I could see the you version of her showing up. Yeah. In I don't know how to explain it. Uh, but after a while, you kind of learn that this is just a... A, a sense of touch that you didn't have before and you can actually uh, really connect with your environment through this through this method and feel things I, I, I just found out the other day um, that if you are sensing stretch space which you can do in deep meditation I put my hand over over the kettle and as the water changed from uh, liquid to boiling I had this incredible sense of like energetic popcorn all up and down my arm, and that was the rays suddenly changing. Uh, no, that was that was you putting your hand in boiling water. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's As a result not, of the phase shift of magic. the water. So that was a very, very interesting experience. I've hand. had a variety of really compelling experiences since I started unsealing these books, including a lot of telekinesis. But again, yes. the bottom line message yes. that if I was just going to oh, try to distill everything down to its core is that the, the mission of Jesus actually worked, and that as a result, we are not going to have our planet destroyed. Wow. It's very fascinating. Michael, Has he ever claimed to be Christian before? I, I feel like I don't remember uh, him being this I mean, blatant. Vaguely during the QAnons. Yeah, but this, I mean, this seems like he's, he's a good Christian boy now. Had me point out and discover that on the day of December 21st, 2012, when I'd been predicting a solar flash... Mm -hmm. For so many years leading up to this, from at least 2007, 2008, I was all on 2012. And then you were so wrong. So on the very day that I expected this to happen, it did happen. Not in this galaxy, On the though. star next door to us, which yeah. is Proxima Centauri. It's part of the Alpha well, Centauri close. system. So on that very day, it's, it's around December 24th, 2012. So I was like, going to say, it was actually not the day. It was several days oh, later. Okay. I'm glad I, I allowed him the chance to correct himself. The closest we can get by calculating how light moved, it was like three days apart. But there literally has been a solar flash. So outside of the fact that it didn't occur where he said it would happen, and it didn't occur when he said it would happen. It literally happened. It was perfectly... It yeah. was perfect. <laughs> On that very day, next door to us, that was a thousand times brighter than usual that would have cooked everything alive on the surface of the planet. Including your brain, apparently. I don't know why these guys in the comments section act like I have no evidence, or they just say whatever they feel <laughs> like saying. It's not most of you. There's a few. Uh -huh. Nice. And, you know, I don't engage on it. But the point is, you sure there's don't. so much evidence in these books. There's so much evidence. I, don't even, I can't even begin to get through all of it right now. But how in the hell did we get a solar flash exactly like we were expecting within three days of the deadline? Well, I mean, exactly... Yeah, that's not... If what do you mean? I, well, he does this funny math where it's like, I could predict something's going to happen on Wednesday, and then if it happens on Saturday, I'll be like, look, I was pretty close. I was pretty close. But <laughs> then you can also go, if it happens on Monday, be like, that's pretty close, too. Yeah, close enough, right? Every day is kind of close. Like, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, over the course of several thousand years, everything's relatively close. But I would like to see him get one bang on. That'd be nice. Based on easily calculated math that Proxima Centauri is 4.424 light years away. I forget exactly what it is, but something like that. So... It's when you do the numbers, which I've got in previous YouTube videos, you can watch free of charge on this channel. 
YouTube.com slash David Wilcox 333 is where you always want to go. That's my custom link. David, we're David literally Wilcox there right now. You don't have to plug it. And you also got to look under the live tab and not just under the videos tab because a lot of times I have a live stream coming up, but I haven't uploaded a video. Now, that is good advice. So that's important. And, of course, please subscribe, too. Click the bell and subscribe <laughs> because, like, I can never quite make it to 500,000 subscribers, but I've been so close for, like, my God, three years. Ah! So if you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. Ooh. I don't uh, normally ever say that, but actually it would be cool. But if you I did. really need money. But I'm so, anyway, so desperate. I do want to get out here more. I, I feel like we're in the final sequence now. Uh oh. That's one of the main things the Alliance has been showing us. And it's very exciting for me because, again, within three days of when I had prophetically expected. Okay, David, let's, let's drill down on this before uh, a little bit more. He said. On December 21st, 2012, there was going to be a solar flash that ended the world. Right. None of that. On December 21st, 2012, there was not a solar flash. Yeah. And the world did not end. So yeah. that's over two there. Yeah. And then there was a solar flash several days later in a different location, and it had absolutely no impact on our life. Right. That... In his mind, somehow, that is a super accurate prediction. Perfect. By by my math, it is 0% correct. Well, your math isn't good. That's true. I got to go back. I should. I gotta, Solar flash I talk on December 21st, 2012, within three days, it actually happened next door. Are you telling me that's a coincidence? Yes. Now, <laughs> yes, the literally, the comments yes. Is, Ooh, okay, fine. But you can say whatever you want. You can say Faggot. whatever you want, but it's within three days, and it's the same thing. Faggot. Stars don't usually do He's this. right. I can say yeah. whatever. Oh, I can do that. A brightness flare a thousand times brighter than usual. Okay? Queer. They don't usually give off this massive amount of energy Ooh, that's so me. huge that it would cook everything in the solar system. But that happened when the ancient prophecies told us to expect it here. Uh, three days later in the And so as I did the science on this, I realized that this is because did the 25,000 year cycle is actually Crying in a bathtub is doing our science. sun and planets orbiting around Alpha Centauri. And to really, really simplify it, when they get closest to each other, there's an energetic exchange. You could think of it sort of like lightning. It's something like that. And it happened over there, but it didn't happen over here, at least not yet. Well, what we find Which out is that, yeah, it is going to happen incorrect. here, but it's being delayed. And it's being delayed. Does he not in order really, for this would be like saying, I predicted the, the 49ers were going to win the Super Bowl. Right. And then when they don't win the Super Bowl, we were like, yeah, but they were there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's 100 percent correct. Yeah. Oh, uh, basically is right. <laughs> us to get our stuff together. So you've heard me talk about this before, but it's so fascinating because Michael wrote these seven books and had me explain the sacred science of it all in the sacred science video course. Again, it's 11 different videos, totaling 10 and a half hours of content. For only $8,000. Loaded $8, with slides, <laughs> seven camera angles. It's amazing. I really put my all into this, and it's a worthwhile product. Again, Jubilation, J-U- He has to be so fucking broke to plug this much. I've yeah. never heard him do this he before. He must be hurting good. Patreon.com slash the plans on podcast. Oh, yeah. at thedisclosure.com gets you a massive discount that I never offered before, basically because the DS keeps hammering us down. Mm. We haven't been able to close on a deal yet. And so, Dennis oh. Schroeder. you know, the financial thing <laughs> oh, is Oh, they still haven't big... been able to close on a deal just yet because of the deep state. Okay, you want to talk about a prophecy being right. Uh, I believe several months ago when we were covering this, what we discussed is these guys were going to keep telling David that they were right yeah. on the cusp right. of having a deal. It's almost there. We just need a touch more money yeah. from you, and then for sure we're going to get it. Turns out we're still correct so far. Yeah. I would say our prediction has been a little bit more accurate. Yeah. I also did predict the video wouldn't come out when he said it wouldn't it would be in the first week of march which yeah. also was true pretty accurate now i'm not psychic i just know david is reliably unreliable yeah we just know david Big deal. i'm the Big david whisperer but we're getting through You're and I, I have a movie coming out <laughs> a lot of you've been asking gay. about levitation uh, levitation is due to come out now small penis. most likely uh i'm gonna david say whisperer. early coming summer to abc this so fall hopefully read by the June, chat they're even calling you gay <laughs> We're actually just about ready to get a rough cut of the film right now. There's a big surprise about the narrator. I can't say who it is yet, but I'm very, very Uncle excited. Uncle Colin. Yeah. It looks like we are going to close with this one. Imagine that he puts out this fucking diary. Oh, Uncle Colin's going to talk to you about the end of times. God, I, <laughs> mate. Love. It's going to be amazing. Uncle Colin's here uh, to narrate your so I'm movie. I'm very happy about that. 
and they've really geeked out on <laughs> this film. Probably demanded a separate paycheck for Uncle Colin. It's going to have <laughs> Dr. Stephen Greer. It's going to have Dr. Stephen Greer's latest insiders, including Michael Herrera, mm-hmm. and uh, trying to remember the other guy's name. But anyway, we've wow. got some Oops. incredible what a cast. Uh, yeah, big surprises like that other guy. Hey, we've got Michael Herrera and the other one. <laughs> stuff coming out of this movie, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be. I, I'm going to get to see it pretty soon. Rough cut. I mean, you made um, it. I talked well, about a whole bunch of things, not, including the concept of levitating saints about. and what is the motile force that lifts humans off the ground when they're in this exalted angelic consciousness. Because you know. This, believe it or not, is actually a fairly common thing that you hear about. It shows up in uh, Tibetan Buddhism with Padmasambhava. He levitates up into the air. I mean, it's also literally like a known of his trick they do. And then he yeah, it's pretty well-known ruse. Yeah, where materializes they have the staff and there's the, yeah. the whole architecture that gets the hidden by life. the robes. Very, very fascinating. So what I'm saying is that this, this solar flash that was supposed to happen here did not happen here, but it happened next door. And then the and other that thing that we read I about in the right. book of Revelations was the pole shift. Well, beginning in book two, I found out that the Edgar Casey reading that predicted a pole shift, a non-catastrophic pole shift beginning in 2001, actually came true. Wow. A Chinese scientist named Professor <laughs> Zhao Dong Song oh, no. <laughs> actually discovered Dong Song. that the Earth's <laughs> inner Zhao core Dong had Song. a That was my favorite Cisco song. It started in 2001. Song. Exactly. <laughs> Let the me year. see that dong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dong, the dong, dong, dong song. <laughs> the Asian, the Asian Cisco. Well, I wanted to see your dong. Show me the dong, dong, the dong, dong, dong. That's right. Ended in 2013. <laughs> and it hasn't moved anymore. <laughs> there was a pole shift inside the Earth. The core moved, as predicted by Edgar Cayce in the 1930s. It moved sure. in 2001, and it stopped right after the Mayan calendar end date when the explosion takes place next door at Proxima Centauri. I believe he is vaguely right about this. I don't remember the exact timeline, but there was some sort of shift in the way the the internal (coughs) mechanisms of the Earth were moving around that time. Once again, this has all the fingerprints of a higher angelic consciousness using some type of super advanced technology, if you want to call it that. I would probably liken it to a pairing with the sun, a pairing with the full civilizational power of the sun to create massive energetic change that our sun itself is, is holding back this energetic explosion so that we don't have a pole shift. And the Earth's axis did have to turn, which it did, but nothing happened. So to have the Earth's axis turn exactly when Edgar Cayce told us that it would, Isn't this another stopping point exactly when the him? Mayan calendar told us I it would, would stop, yeah, kinda. and a non-catastrophic solar flash happens over there. Like, the thing you said was going to end the Earth happened, and nothing happened. So yeah. doesn't that mean you were, again, wrong? Yeah. It's catastrophic for them, but not for us. On Proxima Centauri, three days around the Mayan calendar end date. This is absolutely incredible. Hmm. And apparently... <laughs> Said with no enthusiasm. We <laughs> this now is, uh, have absolutely so much more incredible. going incredible. on because Michael book. tells me in the 1990s that instead of looking at the Mayan calendar end date as 2012 that perhaps you should see it as the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction of December 26th, 2020. Which the world did also not end on that day. No. He actually said this. He actually gave us an exact date. He said, I like that as the Mayan calendar end date better. Well, of course, we're all still here, so what the (laughs) heck does that mean? Well, What does it mean? If we look at these other points in time where these energetic nodes were talked about, one of them was... 1936, and we discussed that in the books. Mm. 1936 is when where a certain you have, Austrian painter uh, was <laughs> getting ready. An energetic change where the Earth's core apparently started its its polar drift, the beginning of that polar drift that really picked up in 2001. Oh, I think he is. The energetic influences to Hitler. that caused that to happen started to occur in 1936. Wow. We also hear in the Law of One that this allowed the permeability of dimensions. In 1936, it became easier for both positive and negative beings oh. to transfer over into our reality. The devil caused the Holocaust. And so this is a really interesting phenomenon because it actually leads to results for both the good and the bad. 
Wow. If you do these negative ceremonies, you will actually see some type of apparition before you. You know, that's, a, that's an interesting question, but I don't think on the level of bad that the Holocaust was, I don't think we have seen an equal good force displayed in the universe in a similar time frame. You know what I mean? No. Like, what is the good version of the Holocaust? Yeah, we don't, we the, don't have the, that. the baby boom? <laughs> and in this case, it's a negative apparition, but it will talk to you and it will tell you what it wants. And so you've heard about things like Mephistopheles let, and let Dr. Faust. Let <laughs> I've learned more I'm recent times you. that this is what, actually my dick? something that Banana people sandwich. experience. That's, that's what they, they got They experience a hallucination. They experience a communication. They can hear what they're told to do, and they can decide or not decide if they want to go along with it. Now, of course, this sounds dangerous, right? It's like, wait a minute, deal with the devil. What are you talking about? Well, I, again, anybody who would do this is very, very foolish. Uh, but it's not actually... David's about two more months away of uh, missed car payments from doing a deal with the devil. Yeah, it's eternal easy to say that right now, buddy. Anyway, yeah. when they're repossessing because your none dog... Because of these beings are really eternal. They're food. created by our thoughts. And this is one of the things that the insiders told me. I mean, even Uncle Jack, who I've been lampooning with the Colin McGeezer character. Who the fuck is Uncle you know, Jack? This is a real insider I have no who idea. I spoke to for many, many years. That's a real guy? And he has this outrageous Queensland, Australia accent, and he taught me a lot of funny sayings. And a lot of people think it's really funny. There are some people who are very square and can't laugh at all at it. Amen, brother. <laughs> so you have to kind of do it in little intervals, mate. You fuck don't want to do squares. too much at once because they get a bit bulked up from it. If you know what I'm saying, mate. Exactly. Why don't we pause here? Because I think this will probably be about the halfway point because he's going to yeah. meditate at the end. Wow. Uh, so far, bizarre. Bizarre, yeah. I, I don't know where we're at with this. A lot of rehashing. Started really strong, followed by about 55 straight minutes of shit we've already heard many, yeah. many times. But now we're taking the interesting twist. I'm hoping when he goes on to... Uh, kind of better explain the end of the military industrial complex because i don't know how that's going to happen I, I, I hope yeah he... nothing we've said so far leads me to know how that happens no he's mostly just been uh criticizing his critics for yeah. for mocking him for being wrong about, about how he's everything yeah he's super not gay you're just being you're being dorks in the comments yeah everyone in the comments oh, is oh losers. I'm, I'm a homosexual <laughs> okay yeah no you guys are dorks all right patreon.com slash in plain sight pod we've got uh we got a houston pimp and we also is the australian and meth one up yet? I don't remember if that got put up. Maybe they'll both be up anyway. Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll get all episodes will be made available. Yeah. Uh, at Hidden Plain Sight Radio on Instagram, you're at Brandon Steele Hidden on Instagram. We're at the Hidden Pod on Twitter until Friday. Who to who? Mama out.